Hi folks, welcome to my channel. It's Friday and day 26 of the 2018 Inktober Drawing Challenge. Today the word prompt from Jake Parker's official list is stretch and so I've chosen to draw a giraffe stretching his long neck up into the sky. For the ink painting today I'm using Dr. PH Martin's coloured Bombay India inks and I thought I'd try out the bokeh style background for this one again, but taking what I learnt from the woodpecker painting a couple of days ago into consideration, I'm only going to be using one colour for the background this time. So let's see how it goes. So I began by wetting the entire background with clean water before dropping in a diluted turquoise ink all over. Then I used my cheap makeup blender sponge to lift off circles of ink for a softer looking background. With that done, I went in and began to paint the giraffe's eye using a small round paintbrush and a mixture of black, brown and a bit of that turquoise ink as well. With this done, I moved up to the mouth of the giraffe and added a bit of colour to the nostril and the nose. Before I got going with the rest of the markings, I decided to go in and add a light wash, like a bit of an underpainting, to the whole of the neck area using a very diluted brown ink. I thought this would be easier to do before I put in the details of the main markings and thought it might help to think of this painting in stages. This way I could more easily see which individual patches should be painted darker and which ones should be left lighter, without losing the colour values on the piece as a whole. And speaking of colour, I chose more of a terracotta colour rather than um, an orangey brown for this giraffe today and really the only reason I did this was because I thought terracotta looked really nice together with the turquoise of the background. But, and there is a but, as much as I like this choice of colour for the giraffe, Dr. PH Martin's terracotta ink is a bit different to the others. It's a lot thicker for a start and really needs a lot of shaking to mix it together before even getting it out of the bottle. I think this is to do with the nature of the pigments used, but I love the colour so went ahead and mixed a small amount with some water in my palette, just to thin it out. But I did find it a bit inconsistent and as it dried I also noticed the coverage wasn't as even as I wanted. As a result, I found myself having to reapply several layers to even it out and what should have been a fairly quick painting ended up taking me a lot longer. Having said that though, I did really enjoy doing this painting and there are a few tips that I've looked into to try and sort out the problem with some of the brown Dr. PH Martin's Bombay inks. One of which is to use some stainless steel ball bearings and um, just some tiny ones that can fit into the plastic bottles that I've got and just keep those in there and give them a good shake with the mixture and that helps to break it up and thin out the ink before you try and remove it from the bottle. So that's something that I think I need to look into especially if I'm going to carry on using ink once Inktober's over. But if you've got any other ideas or suggestions for how to sort of even out some of these inconsistent colour pigments, then do drop them in the comments box below because I'd love to hear them. And if that's something that you've experienced as well, because sometimes I'm not sure if it's to do with the age of my inks or even to do with a particular batch. So it would be good to hear from you if you've experienced anything like this as well. So with the first layer down I then started to add another layer going slightly darker and just filling in the darkest areas so that was inside his ear and on the horn there as well. The good thing about ink though as I've mentioned before is that once it's dry it doesn't reactivate if you add further layers on top. So that was quite fortunate when I'd put down my sort of underpainting and then I was able to go over with the terracotta ink on top 
and then again when I added subsequent layers it didn't shift anything about underneath. So that's quite an advantage and something that I've been enjoying because it's something you don't have to worry about in the same way that you would if you were using watercolours for example. Once I was happy with how the markings were, I then went on and did a little bit more detail up by his mouth, adding a little bit more shading and also a little bit of shading in a brown colour to the left side of his face. I then touched up the details around the eye and that's always my favourite part, I love doing animal eyes. So I was quite pleased with how that turned out. And then just added a few creases and that kind of thing around his ear and neck as well, although I'm not sure if it's too visible on the video. But with that all done, I then went in and used my sepia fine liner and my white gel pen just to kind of tidy up and add a few more details and some whiskers and that kind of thing. But I hope you've enjoyed this video, I was kind of pleased with how the background turned out today as well. So if you enjoyed it then please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon as well if you want to be notified of all future videos. So thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you tomorrow.